A pleasant good afternoon, members of parliament, support staff, radio listeners, TV viewers, those following via social media, and members of the media. Welcome to this Central Committee meeting number 39 of today, Monday, August 15, 2022. We've established a quorum of eight members of parliament. Please let's stand for a moment of silence. I've received note of, notice of absence from MP Akeem Arndell, MP Sihart Bihlani, and MP William Marlin. Uh, before I move on to notification, I would like to personally welcome everyone back to our, from our recess, and I hope that you're all well, rest, well rested and uh, ready to hit the floor, hit the ground running, actually. And, um, and before moving into the meeting, I'd like to also inform everyone that prior to going on recess, my aim then was to clear the backlog of all the pending meetings. And since we only have two weeks left during this parliamentary term, and which ends September 12th, it is imperative that we clear all continuation meetings and all pending meetings as best as we possibly can and that we begin the new parliamentary year, 2022-2023, uh, with a clean slate. Regarding today's agenda point, Parliament requested the presence of the Honorable Ombudsman to elaborate on the agenda point two and three, and unfortunately, she was unable to, uh, to um, come to Parliament, or she was not available until next month. So the Ombudsman, all, however, indicated that the report contains sufficient information for Parliament to start the discussion without her, but if Parliament wishes, she can always be invited at a later date. The report contains enough information for you, the members of Parliament, to have a fruitful discussion and debate in preparations for the upcoming meetings in the course of the week. And with that, members of Parliament, I would like to now turn the floor over to you for any more notifications you may have. I see that MP Gums would like to have the floor. MP Gums. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon to you, if you fear, my colleagues and those joining us, and as well, welcome back to everyone after the recess period. Madam Chair Lady, um, earlier today, I booked in some documents that I see we've just gotten in our email, and I would therefore like to ask for an adjournment, because I believe they may be pertinent to the discussions today, that we take a pause to read them and then return. I don't know if that would be possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your proposal, MP Gums. MP Gums, I, uh, we have three agenda points. One of them is very urgent that we um, discuss. I would, advise, I would advise that we do agenda point one, and once we're done with agenda point two, we'll take a brief adjournment for, your, for the reading pause. Any other member of parliament? Yes, MP Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and good afternoon to everyone, and good afternoon to the people of St. Martin, my colleagues. Honorably, good afternoon to each and everyone. Madam Chair, I've taken notice of the meeting that we're having here today concerning the in-depth investigation of the Ombudsman concerning the tender of the garbage. And given the revelation of my colleague, Ms. Gums, now booking these documents into Parliament, I would like to make a request for Parliament to ask the government of St. Martin to submit the documents, the advice that was sent to the governor in relation to the signing off of the tender documents. Because I don't believe we had Parliament had received those documents. And the reason why I'm asking that, after reviewing these documents that was booked in to Parliament, it behooves Parliament to want to know exactly which advice was sent to the governor. So for my review, I would like, Madam Chair, for the Parliament of St. Martin to request the government of St. Martin to send that advice. I don't know if I'm saying it correct, to Parliament. So the members of Parliament can review and make sort of a comparison between what was sent to the government, to the governor, and yeah, sorry, what was sent to the governor and what it is we have in our inbox. I thank you very much, thank Madam Thank you, Chair. MP Emmanuel. Your request is duly noted. Is there any member of Parliament? Oh, I see MP Westcott Williams would like to have the floor. MP Westcott. Thank you, Madam Chair, lady, and a good afternoon. A good afternoon to all of you, my colleagues, to you, Madam Chair, and to all tuned into this meeting, the uh, welcome back to my colleagues and 
those who usually tune into these meetings and um, I'm for one glad to be to be back. Madam Chair Lady, I took note of your statement regarding the backlog of meetings and trying to bring those up to up to speed, up to par, if you wish. Madam Chair Lady, I had expected that given the lengthy recess of Parliament, that by the time we got back here, which is today, that we would have seen many questions and queries that have been posed by members of Parliament. We would have been receiving the answers to these, to these matters. A quick review of our incoming documents, however, shatters um, that expectation, Madam Chair Lady. And in addition to that, in addition to the outstanding questions and queries by members of Parliament, the, there are some worrisome issues. There are several worrisome issues that um, are in the public domain and one would think, I would think, that the government would have addressed these. Unfortunately, again, this is not the case. Um, Madam Chair, Lady, matters such as the budget 2022 and the amendments to the budget that this parliament needs to approve. Question is, where is the draft amended budget 2022? Madam Chair, Lady, we left for recess and had this outstanding issue of the changes to the law where the government paid out vacation allowance to civil servants. Madam Chair Lady, since then and still is the issue what happens to the subsidized school boards with respect to these cuts. Coincidentally, I happen to have taken note of a statement by the acting or the deputy prime minister that a solution has been found. Um, wouldn't it be prudent to inform parliament of this solution since we have the, the law there that has been passed by parliament? Madam Chair Lady, in, in fact, I have several other issues that I believe need to be raised at the beginning of um, parliament following the recess, such as the outcry by the president of the University of St. Martin regarding the law on, on higher education, Madam Chair Lady, a matter constantly on, on, the, on the table here of Parliament. Madam Chair Lady, it's like four years ago that we received a research paper on tertiary education on St. Martin. The question would be, why is this matter still an issue today? And Madam Chair Lady, as I stated, there are several other issues. I just wanted to highlight some of them, and I will find the appropriate time to bring forward the other matters that I believe Parliament needs to address as well. And government needs to recognize its responsibility towards Parliament to inform Parliament, not only when they're asked. So Madam Chair Lady, let me leave it here for right now and... I will um, address the other matters. I have a few more, but I'll do that at another point. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams. Next, we have MP Rolanda Bryson. You have the floor. That's still not available. MP Bryson, try. Yes. That's still good. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you. Tech support responded quickly. She tried. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon to one and all, and welcome back to my colleague, members of parliament from recess. Um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to comment on the, the scheduling of meetings. Indeed, um, at least for one of the committees, uh, to my colleague, to my left, MP Westcott Williams, I know there are some outstanding meetings, uh, particularly from the committee of VSA. And in consultation with the Khrifir, I believe we're trying to see if indeed we can get I believe it's the meeting regarding the GHI, the meeting on immigration and labor. There's also an outstanding meeting regarding the, with the AIDS Foundation. Um, I think that we might be able to get uh, those meetings completed. Um, however, I will be sending a request to the requester and to you, Madam Chair, if the, commit, if the meeting on labor and the request from, which was from MP George Pantaflet, and the request from MP Westcott Williams, if they can be merged in one meeting. Um, 
Other than that, Madam Chair, uh, I just tried opening the document. Is it possible the document can be placed on the P drive because it's not opening for me from the email attachment? I don't know, maybe if it can go on the P drive, then I can open it easier. It's a very big document, or maybe it's done as a WeTransfer link or something like that. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Bryson. We'll look into that, uh, inform look, follow up on the um, information regarding the uh, document, and I'll get back to you in a few minutes. I'll have the flip you look into it. And um, I look forward to your letter as well, MP Bryson, to merge the um, meetings. Is there any other member of parliament that wish to have the floor for notifications? I see no need. Then we can start with the addressing agenda point one and taking a break right after. So we have it as agenda points for this meeting today. Agenda point one, the approval of composition, delegation, and provisions for members of parliament to participate in the committees of Far Latino to be held on August 18th and August 19th in Panama. This can be found on the IS document 1130, Parliamentary Year 2021-2022, dated July 12, 2022. This was received right during recess. And then IS 1131, dated July 12, 2022, IS 1129, dated July 8, 2022, and IS 1168, dated August 8, 2022. Discussions on the content of, the next one is the discussion, agenda point two, discussion on the content of a systemic investigation regarding the tendering and awarding process of the solid waste collection 2021-2026. This can be found under IS 1098, Parliamentary Year 2021-2022, dated June, 20, June 22, 27, 2022, and the Ombudsman St. Martin 2021 Year Report, which is Agenda Point 3, IS 1167, dated 2021-2022, on the August 8, 2022. We go over to Agenda Point 1. On July 12, 2022, Parliament received the convocation and agenda for the meeting of Far Latino to be held in Panama on August 18 and August 19. That's this week. These documents are registered as stated before on the IS 1130, dated July 12, 2022, 1131, 1129, and 1168, and can be found on the P drive. The proposal to Parliament is to approve this work visit for the members of Parliament to attend these meetings. And the proposal is furthermore to approve the travel arrangements for the delegation. Now the meetings, the meetings to be held on August 18th and the 19th were first communicated to Parliament as stated before in July 12th. And the sequence is based on the composition of the three committees which are also based al alphabetically in order. The proposal for the members are as follows. So this committee, under this committee, Economic Affairs, Social De Debt, and Regional Development. Alphabetically, we have MP Rolando Bryson and MP Christophe Emmanuel. And, and under this committee, we have Labor, Social, and Legal Affairs. Under this committee, you have myself, MP Grisha Heilige Martin, and MP George Pandeflat. And in the third committee, you have Human Rights, Justice, and Prison Policies. And here you have MP Angelique Ramu and MP Sarah Westcott-Williams. Before proceeding with which member of parliament I'd like to give the floor, I'd like to first go by saying that I will not be attending this meeting this week as we have a slew of meetings already um, on, on the table. So then if I decide not to go, the next parliament, uh, member of parliament alphabetically will be then Angelique removed. So I would like to now give the floor to the members of parliament that I just named off to see if you are interested in um, attending. MP Bryson, I see you would like to have the floor. Um, I had a question, Madam Chair, good afternoon again. Um, I sent an email, I saw a communication from Panama regarding some, uh, I don't know, some social unrest and so on there, just to confirm if everything was still planned regarding travel to Panama and if, uh, you know, in the interest of the safety of the members to be traveling, if, if everything is okay. Yes, we also made note of that and we did some, uh, we did some, some research and thus far, anyone, any, everyone can travel. It doesn't um, hamper you from traveling to Panama. No, no cancel. So the members of parliament, again, that wish to, that I just named, um, do I get your confirmation, MP Bryson, if you would like to be attending? Sorry? Oh, 
Are you confirmed to attend? Madam Chair, I, I, was, I was on the list. I thought yes, it was so yes, H. Yes, your and name then is on the list. Your, for economic affairs, social debt, and regional, I have your person, MP Bryson, mm -hmm. and MP Christophe Emmanuel. What would be the travel dates? You would have to leave on Wednesday, day this, after tomorrow. This Wednesday come in? Yes. No, Madam Chair, I will not be able to attend. Okay. And then I see that MP Westcott Williams would like to have the floor. Yes, Madam Chair, Lady, um, thank you. And I respectfully decline. I will not be traveling for Par Latino. And um, I would be amiss if I was not to remark again that, Madam Chair, Lady, the discussion regarding um, the bang for the buck in terms of participation participation in Part Latino, vis-a-vis -vis participation in other parliamentary bodies. Madam Chair, Lady, that discussion is far from over one. Secondly, we're still awaiting answers from the government with respect to regional bodies, et cetera, participation, the, um, the value of statements made um, at, for example, Par Latino, are these made personally, are these made on behalf of the parliament, et cetera, et cetera. It is ironic somewhat as well, Madam Chair Lady, to note that in, these, in this agenda, in this agenda for Par Latino meetings, the ones coming up, um, reference is made to source material from, for example, ICLAC. Uh, organization that we talk about, also parliamentary um, coordination and parliamentary sessions in connection with ICLAC. And, and Par Latino is mentioning that. Par Latino in its convocation is mentioning um, UNICEF as, uh, uh, as a, a source material, where source material can be had. Madam Chair, Lady, we have several reports from UNICEF and our government here that needs to be discussed here in Parliament. So if you just get my drift in terms of no, um, one, thank you, but no thanks for the, for the travel to, 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 um, to Par Latino. And I want to stress that we need to pick this matter up, back up regarding regional collaboration and the seriousness by this government for that collaboration. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams. Is there any other member of Parliament that wish to have the floor? Yeah. MP Angelique Remo. M Angelique. A pleasant MP. good afternoon Remo. to you. You have the floor. <laughs> Madam Chair, Lady, to my colleagues, to the viewing and listening public at large as well. Um, Madam Chair, Lady, I would also like to decline travel to Parlatino. Thank you. Thank you, MP Remo. Next, we have MP Pantaflat. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon to the Chair, my colleagues in Parliament, those that are following and viewing. Um, also welcome back to my colleague from recess. I hope um, you all had a good time to take a, a good rest because there's much to be done. Um, Madam Chair, also definitely for obvious reasons, and we know exactly why, um, I'm declining to attend the Palatina meeting at this time. So I just want to make that plain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Pantaflet. I have also noticed from MP Emmanuel that he also will be declining his attendance. And with that, then it leaves the exact same members of parliament in the committee. So in other words, then we can safely say then to Parlatino that no members of parliament will be attending this, uh, this week's Parlatino uh, committees. So with that, members of parliament, I'm sure, I would sorry. like to, yes, MP Pantaflet? Um, they will be informed as soon as possible. Yes, as we so. will inform them as soon as possible. Yes. OK, yes. thank you. Yes. Uh, with that, MPs, I would like to then take a brief adjournment. I think, what, 15 minutes for us to go over the 15-minute uh, adjournment is OK with everyone to go over the newly um, submitted incoming documents? Yes, meeting adjourned for 15 minutes.
Check one, two. Sorry. Welcome back, members of parliament. We were just doing a little brief sound check before we returned. We took a brief adjournment to uh, discuss uh, the, uh, to give the members of parliament the opportunity to read the documents that was just booked in. And with that then, we can now begin with the agenda point two. Agenda point two is the systemic investigation regarding the tendering and awarding process of the solid waste collection 2021-2026. This can be found on the IS 1098 parliamentary year 2021-2022 dated June 27th, 2022. On June 27, 2022, Parliament received a report from the Ombudsman entitled The Final Report Regarding the Systemic Investigation into the Tendering and Awarding Process of the Solid Waste Collection 2021-2026. This document can, is registered as Incoming Document IS-1098 dated June 27, 2022 and can be found on the P drive. At this time, I would like to first give the members of, of Parliament the opportunity to give feedback on the contents of the final report. The final report consisted of eight uh, chapters. Uh, chapter one, the introduction, the legal basis, the terms of reference collection of the solid waste 2021-2022, the evaluation process, the bottlenecks and challenges, conclusion and recommendations, and at the end, the final chapter was a response from the Minister of Rami to the parliamentary findings and report. To which member of parliament do I give the floor? MP Bryson. Yeah, Madam Chair, um, good afternoon to you and all once again. Madam Chair, I just wanted to um, understand a bit exactly what the format or purpose of the meeting is. Um, I was under the impression, of course, and you did explain that the ombudsman would be present. I even remember in the public meeting, uh, an intention was going to be requested to have the ombudsman present. Of course, she's off island, so that's not possible. Um, but with her not present, which has always been the custom that if we're discussing a report from the Ombudsman, she would be present. I just want to understand what is the intention of the meeting. I mean, for example, uh, in, in communication with you, you said to get clarity or to provide clarity. How is the clarity to be provided? Are we going to send questions from this meeting to the Ombudsman and then get replies, or are we just kind of uh, talking amongst each other, just to understand, because this is a bit uh, strange for me. Actually, MP Bryson, thank you for your um, question. And, and MP Bryson, it was actually suggested over the summer by a senior MP to have an in-depth discussion about the Ombudsman report. And that is why I, I took that suggestion um, seriously. I, I mean, it was, I mean, it's a senior MP giving us a suggestion to, we should have had an in-depth discussion about it. And as stated before, I tried to get the ombudsman in. She wouldn't be here until next month, and that would be a little too far. And given the, um, the fact that this is a very urgent um, request, I said, let me at least give the members of parliament some, some time to discuss this in-depthly, because the meeting is going to be called on Wednesday, the public meeting, and then we only have the minister coming in to answer questions. We will only have clarifications in the first round. And in the second round, the members of parliament that signed in will only have 10 minutes to discuss. Here now we have an opportunity to in discuss it in depth and give the public of St. Martin a clear indication of what exactly is in the report. And then hence the reason for this meeting. I see that, yes? MP uh, Peterson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. A good afternoon to yourself, to the Khufir, and to my honorable colleagues and to the Secretariat and everybody else too and then throughout the various media outlets. Um, Madam Chair, um, a, a good point to note um, on the fact that this, this is a final report of a systemic investigation by the Ombudsman um, is to also um, kind of follow the line of what the Ombudsman has been saying on the radio interviews that she has had within the last two months, which is that this is a final report. So um, the information that Parliament would need in order to um, do our task as per the, um, the launch for ordering uh, Ombudsman um, to react on it, um, that information um, should be in the report, in the final report. So um, there is no, let's say that we now give the Ombudsman a chance to clarify what we have No, This is a final report from the Ombudsman that is sent to Parliament as per the launch for ordering, and now we have to act. So the, uh, I understand the sentiment of wanting the Ombudsman here, but I 
going by what she has been saying on the radio, I do not think that she herself finds that she should be here for us to understand the, the depth of, uh, of this final report. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MD Peterson. MD Bryson, I see you'd like to have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to kind of do a follow-up on that point. Madam Chair, every single time uh, the, a report has been presented to Parliament, be it the, 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 whether it's a final report, for example, on, the glu uh, on, on uh, I think it was the towing of vehicles, the annual reports, whether it was Dr. Ardern or the current um, um, ombudsman, the ombudsman was always present. So that has been a total custom. This is nothing strange. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we bring up the, the, the national ordinance of the ombudsman, Article 23 talks about the, 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 the presence of the ombudsman, all done up for Zook of the Staten or on her own, to be present for such discussions. So I don't want to make it seem like I don't mind having a discussion. My central question isn't quite clear. Um, once we have this discussion, is it that additional information can be provided? Because the ombudsman, despite what is said, final reports are drafted and still does come, you know, at her pleasure, and I'm sure she would be happy to be here, does provide additional information. So it's not like it's, it's final, don't ask me nothing no more. I'm, I don't think we should give the impression that the ombudsman would not be willing. As a matter of fact, I think you stated that she is willing to come, so it's not that, oh, it's a final report, don't ask her anymore. I don't think we should paint the ombudsman in that light. Uh, be it a final report or not, the ombudsman is entitled for the opportunity, as a matter of fact, to come and elucidate further. She does presentations, she answers questions, we go back and forth. Um, so I look forward to that still happening, or as a suggestion, will questions that are left unanswered be sent from this committee meeting to the ombudsman for replies, for example, so that the, the meeting has some sort of usefulness. Um, no offense to other members of parliament, I don't think they need my opinion on what the report says and uh, to, to determine what is the interpretation of the report or any missing questions that need to be answered. They don't need that from me, and I don't think it should be vice versa either. I think what's important if that if there's any additional information um, that it would come for the ombudsman. So my suggestion will be, will then any questions posed be sent further to the ombudsman so that the meeting has some sort of uh, purpose? MP Bryson, you are indeed correct. We, on, on normal occasions, the ombudsman is present to present whatever findings she may have or whatever report she had. But let's look at the situation that we're in right now. We received the request, a, urgent, a request for an urgent meeting on Tuesday which gave me only three days to call the meeting and per the rules of order, I have to call a urgent request four days within that time frame. And I, the only time I had was to call it the Wednesday. It didn't give much, many member of parliament the opportunity to delve into it. We had now the summer recess, two reports came out. I contacted the, the um, ombudsman and she is off island, unfortunately. I would have loved to have her here. She also stated again, and I reiterated it in the beginning, if we still need her, she will make herself available next month to come into Parliament to, ask, um, to, uh, to answer any questions. If we want to ask some questions today, maybe we could send a few over to her and then maybe call a meeting in September as well. Is there any other member of Parliament that wish to have the floor? Okay, yes. MP Pantaflik, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I just want to follow up a bit on what my colleague, um, MP Bryson, stated. One thing I've never experienced in Parliament on the Island Council, any organization that sends in a report to parliament or whatever, that individual should be present in order to answer the questions from the members of parliament based on said report. Saying that after the fact, if parliament has questions, then they are willing to come back in, Madam Chair, doesn't hold any water, let me do, you, say it this way. It is an important document. The information the report has made up is very important. And I think seeing that is important, that Parliament should ensure in the presence of the Ombudsman that questions are posed directly. When we had a public meeting, Madam Chair, going through the document myself, I said, wait a minute, the Ombudsman should be here. Because I already had questions for the Ombudsman. But the Ombudsman was not present. Now, we are talking about it is important, it is urgent, and I understand the rules of order, Madam Chair, of calling it within a specific time. But right now, as the situation is, I think we should be very careful in setting a precedent where 
organizations or individuals can submit report to parliament and they can come in whenever they feel like coming to parliament, Madam Chair. That's very dangerous. It has not happened in the past and I don't think it should happen right now. Seeing the urgency of this matter, definitely we should. And basically we saw, I think it's a 14 or 16 page uh, information that came in there now from the, uh, uh, one of our colleagues, or two of our colleagues in, in, in parliament. Then that also it is being requested that these documents vetted by the governor and so on. So I'm saying, if this is the case, and also sent to the, the, to, the, um, the, to, to the ombudsman. So Madam Chair, I think it's important and prudent and responsible for us to ensure that any questions arising from this document, from us or from my person as a member of parliament to be posed, should be posed to the ombudsman, Madam Chair, because there are also urgent issues that I want to see discussed, like the short-term labor contract, like the debt cancellation, like issues that are taking place at the harbor right of regards to invoices, documents being brought into the, uh, food sub being brought into the island, Madam Chair, as to who's controlling what, who gets what, contracts time with whom. Those are also important because those are the things that touches the people also, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Pandaflat. I see that MP Peterson would like to have the floor again. MP Peterson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I see that the discussion has gone a little bit left, but um, all of the answers are in the law. It's all in the laws for ordering ombudsman. And according to the same Article 23 that um, my colleague just mentioned, it says very clear, the ombudsman is, al dan niet op verzoek van de staten, bevoegd. Dadelijk na het afsluiten, so bevoegd. Keyword is bevoegd, meaning that there is no obligation at all, as some of my colleagues um, want to make it seem. And if you look at the Litwe, one set article, it refers back to Article 22, tweede, derde en vierde lid, which in vierde lid also said, the staten zijn bevoegd de ombudsman op te roepen in een zitting van de staten te verschijning om vragen te beantwoorden. So we can ask her, did we do that? No. This is a meeting, this is a CC meeting that everybody was informed that this was going to be um, a sort of us as MPs going through the report because we have now had two months to peruse the report, but now it, we are making it seem as if we do not want to do our jobs as members of parliament, but we want to wait another month for the ombudsman to come back to then go through a report report that we should have gone through since that first week, you know, but um, nevertheless, to come, to come back to, um, to what some of my colleagues were saying, um, there is absolutely no obligation. We can definitely call a meeting with the Ombudsman at a later time, as per the law, um, but this central uh, committee meeting was not that set up, and I just want to make that clear. This was not an omission by the um, um, Chair Lady of Parliament, this was how the meeting was planned. And I think that um, if some MPs coming from the coalition were not aware of this, then there seems to be uh, some miscommunication going on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Peterson. I think MPs, we've belabored this discussion a little too much now. Uh, it is clear that we have concerns. It is clear that we have questions for the Ombudsman. If we conclude that in this meeting, then the questions can be sent to the, to the, to the Ombudsman and then maybe we can call her back to see if we can answer the questions or we could send the questions in writing. But let's start having the discussion about the report. Uh, um, we've had two months to discuss it. Someone has maybe something to say, something of concern, something of uh, suggestions. To which member of parliament do I give the floor to? Let's really start having that in-depth discussion that we so want to begin with. MP Westcott-Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Madam Chair Lady, with or without the presence of the Ombudsman, we have the report before us. In fact, Madam Chair Lady, in the report, the, I want to quote from page 31 of the report under the conclusion, actually, and the Ombudsman um, stated in this report, in the second paragraph, that, and I quote, the minister refused to provide critical information, signed individual evaluation sheets for the completeness of tender documents and signed internal findings report. Madam Chair Lady, like all of my colleagues, um, for, this for this meeting, just before this meeting slash during the meeting at the start, um, we received a document booked in by a faction regarding the evaluation report. So this now would make me wonder when I read a conclusion of the Ombudsman regarding the evaluation report, and now Parliament has this evaluation report. And the question would be, what do we do on the basis 
of that information that we received, which actually is information that could not have been included in the report because the Ombudsman said it was not there. So is my question to you, Madam Chair, to the, to the, to the committee. So now we do have the signed individual evaluation sheets for the completeness of tender documents. So that would be the question. In addition to that, Madam Chair Lady, this whole matter of awarding of the garbage contracts cannot go, um, cannot be discussed or, yeah, it can be discussed, but in my opinion, what is important right now is the vision for waste management in general. What, what, is, what, what is happening, for example, with the whole um, waste disposal management project? Well, where, where, where is that going? So when we're going to discuss about awarding of the contracts, now I would like to know um, more about that, more about the project under the NRPB, et cetera, et cetera. We have not, we have not heard much of that lately, Madam Chair Lady. I think the latest, the latest thing was the um, resettlement plan from which we have, or uh, about which we have learned that that has been approved, $12 million, I believe it was, and, 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 then, and then it went, it went silent. I would like to know what's happening in that context, in that whole context, the waste management um, project. What's, what's happening? Whole resettlement was, well, what were the conditions of this 12 million? Is this 12 million to be spent in the economy of St. Martin or could those who will be receiving these um, payments, could they just, you know, up and, and leave? So these are the kind of discussions that we, that we should be having, Madam Chair Lady. I mean, yeah. So for, for example, um, Madam Chair Lady, the evaluation, the evaluation, it was refused to make this public based on the law um, openness of government. Madam Chair, Lady, um, why? Why? When we consider that according to the National Accountability Ordinance, actually um, payment expenditures should be made public as much as possible. That's the basis for our National Accountability Ordinance. So um, this particular evaluation was, was not made public, and it was refused based on the so-called law, the, the National Ordinance Openness of, openness of Government, is um, another, another matter that deserves, in my opinion, our, our interest, um, our concern, rather. Madam Chair Lady, apparently the Ministry of Romy has um, made up a procurement policy. But Madam Chair Lady, how often have not my colleagues, some of my colleagues, and I made mention, asked the government, asked the Minister of Finance regarding the, the, the decision, the decree regarding public procurement, etc., on the basis of the same National Accountability Ordinance. We have asked so often about this particular um, national decree that should further stipulate the matter of public proc procurement. That shouldn't be something of a ministry to quickly throw out a policy out there for procurement. The government needs a procurement decision, Madam Chair, Lady, according to our accountability ordinance. When, 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 when are we going to get a Madam Chair, Lady? When are we going to get a set of rules, a set set of rules regarding tendering. Every 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 year, every five years, it's going to be changed at the at the whim of, of somebody or that's why we that's why we're now with this report in front of us. And it is not sufficient, Madam Chair Lady, to say, well a, a, a policy a policy on public procurement was, was, was established. Madam Chair, lady, right now the government got so many policies, some of them are public and others are not. And when persons approach government, they're told, oh, well, it's a policy. It's an internal policy. How could a policy be internal when, it, when it's affecting um, the, 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 the public and the stakeholders, whichever group or sectors are um, subjected to those, to those policies? Madam Chair, lady, I also took note of the fact that it has been stated that Legal Affairs has reviewed the, the terms of reference. 
Is it possible for us to receive that review? The review of legal affairs regarding the terms of reference for the granting or the evaluating of um, the garbage contracts. Um, Madam Chair, Lady, I, of course, have taken note of the of the report of the report clearly, and um, the concerns, Madam Chair, Lady, as raised by the ombudsman, those concerns have not gone away. And I stated this in one of the previous meetings regarding this issue. Um, so what what happens now, Madam Chair, Lady? What what happens? What happens now? Should we we just take this report and say, well, you know, too bad. What came down? Thanks for the the the, the small steps that apparently have been made following the the surfacing of this report or not the surfacing the submission of this report. And, and then we, we, we continue, I mean, what does, could we, could we get, I don't know from who we would, but could we get some indication what this report um, could mean for liability on government side? Could we understand what kind of potential liabilities this report that we have before us, and in addition to that, um, in additional information that we got at the start of this meeting, what could be the potential um, liability slash fallout for the government where the awarding of garbage contracts are concerned. Uh, with this I mean, is it, is, is it felt that this, this matter would have to be redone in the interest of fairness for everyone? I'm asking, um, and I, Madam Chair, Lady, I, yeah, I asked who could give us who could give us the, that um, that that insight. I don't know if there's something that maybe we can we can learn from the legal review on this on this um on the tour. But in any case, Madam Chair, Lady, like it was when this report was first submitted, um, my question regarding now. So, what does this mean? What does this mean for persons who had objected? before this report even, to the process that was, um, so those directly involved, and you had persons who objected to the way this went. Now we have an official document um, showing some of the um, ina inadequacies that, that apparently um, happened during, or came up during the awarding of these, of these contracts. So Madam Chair, Lady, I want to I wanna leave it here um, for now, where this report is concerned. Thank you, MP Westcott, for your input. Is there any other member of parliament that wish to have the floor? MP Peterson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon once again. Madam Chair, you know, um, the, the topic of this meeting is the report, but the report is 35 pages long, and there are so many details that, um, that I would want to mention about it. But some of them, you know, is, it's, it's, it's clear, it's, it's black and white. Like, for example, the fact that the, the meeting that led up to the signing of the contracts on what they call the indemnification meeting, within that meeting, four of the, four or actually three of the, the companies that were awarded contracts, um, they made it clear that they either did not have machines or they would not purchase machines until a contract was signed. Um, one of those contractors was also selected um, in the best interest of the country. Um, this is exactly what MP Westcott um, was referring to when it comes to the El Bay Hum, the national decree containing general measures that is needed in regards to tender in general. Because there is a big misconception that this garbage um, tender, that it only affects the Ministry of Romi, but it does not. It ties the whole government of St. Martin as the, the parte in the contract, which means that the government of St. Martin is the one who's going to be responsible for any damages, liability-wise. And then we go back to what MP Westcott Williams just, uh, just mentioned. Liability-wise, where are we? Um, what do we do? Um, the, the report talks about so many irregularities from boxes being lost and found, and then some documents today basically contradicting um, said statements that um, we found in the, in the almost one report. So based on the conclusion and based on the law, I also want to know from my colleagues, what is the next step? Um, what are we going to do in regards to this final report? Are we going to um, 
enforce accountability or are we going to ask the Ombudsman um, her insight on it? And I think if we listen to the Ombudsman within these last uh, two months that she went on the radio, I think her opinion on it is very clear. And I think she mentioned publicly um, on numerous occasions that it is now time for Parliament to act. Um, so I, I would want to know from my colleagues as well, like what, what is your sentiment? Um, and I'll leave it at there for now, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Peterson. Next on the speaker's list, we have MP Christophe Emmanuel. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. You know, I am not surprised. I am not surprised, not one bit. Not one bit, Madam Chair. My whole thing is, I would love to see how the chair leader tried to wiggle his helpers out of this one. Because, Madam Chair, I remember asking questions. And this is the reason why I asked for Parliament to request from the government the advice, the document that was sent to the governor. Because then the governor himself, Madam Chair Lady, needs to be put on notice. Because within all the due diligence, it is no way, no how, given what we have here today, the governor could have signed off. That's why I'm querying and I'm asking the question, what exactly did the governor of St. Martin sign off to, sign off on? Madam Chair Lady, I would like to read from the Ombudsman Report, page 6. It says, the infrastructure management department prepares the terms of reference. The tender is initiated after approval of the terms of reference by the COM, the Council of Ministers. The terms of reference is made available to the public. The call to bid. There is an information. Sorry about that. It goes on to say, it goes on to say, the call to the bid, there is an information meeting after the call to bid. Minutes of the meeting and all addendums are drafted and form an integral part of the process. The public tender commences, only bids that are submitted within the allotted time frame are accepted. Each bid must be submitted in three folds. The bids are secure and the usually three member committee are assigned a meeting room and the evaluation begins. The first part of the evaluation is the completeness check. The submitted bids are meticulously checked to verify if the required documents are listed or submitted in the three packages of the, to verify if the required documents are listed, are submitted, I'm uh, sorry, of the bidders. The completeness of documents is done in the beginning to determine whether contractors comply with having all the documents present prior to being evaluated. I would like to read that again, Madam Chair. It goes over to say, contractors comply with having all documents present prior to being evaluated. Each committee member would then sign indicating which contractor complied with this step. In this step, all members of the committee would review each contractor's package to verify if all requested documents were present. Madam Chair, it goes on to say, bidders, and now this is the part, Madam Chair, that I would love to see how members of parliament is going to wiggle out of this one. What, what, what are they going to say? It goes on to say, Madam Chair, bidders that did not comply with the requirements are placed in what is called the disqualified pile. 
Madam Chair, I read it again. Bidders that did not comply with the requirements are placed in what is called the disqualified pile. Now, Madam Chair, if you're disqualified, it means you did not meet the requisite requirements to qualify, Madam Chair Lady. So you are disqualified. So you go in a pile that says disqualified, which means we ain't even watching you against self because you are disqualified. Madam Chair, comments concerning a particular bid are written under completeness check form. Example, missing bank statement or missing GEBE bill, proof of address, etc., and signed off by all members, Madam Chair. It goes on to say, the findings including disputes and discrepancies are placed on the form and goes to the department head SG for review and decision making. Now, Madam Chair, if you turn to page 16, if you turn to page 16, Madam Chair, it speaks about, it speaks, no, sorry, Madam Chair, not page 16, but page 13. Based on chapter 10 of the terms of reference, the following documents had to be submitted along with the tender to qualify. Which means, Madam Chair, there's a number of documents that needs to come into a packet, the three packets, to qualify. Madam Chair, one, Proof of company's registration with the Chamber of Commerce. Two, copy of the entities of the, of the of, um, um, entity 2020 extension business license as issued by the receiver's office of St. Martin. Three, copy of the entity's original business license as issued by or on behalf of the Minister of Tiat with the, with the description of the original business license based on the scope of the work tendered. Proof of registration with SZV and payment of the social premiums as issued by the Social Insurance Bank SZV. Copy of a valid passport of the director owner. Uh, provide crypt number and proof of payment of taxes as issued by the receiver. Sole proprietor, proof of, submit of submittal, Entire form of the last two years, 2018, 2019, of personal income tax stamped by the tax department. A copy of a GEBE bill. Show proof of address of the business. Proof that the company is not bankrupt and that it is not experiencing liquidity or cash flow problems as issued on St. Martin Courthouse. Proof the owner of the sole proprietor is not bankrupt and that it is not experiencing liquidity or cash flow problems as issued on St. Martin. A bank statement indicating the financial capacity of the company. A plan of action work plan for the execution of the works. A guarantee of willingness by the guarantor registered by the CBCS to provide a guarantee of 10% of the bid amount. The guarantee will also be valid towards the principal in case of bankruptcy. A detailed list of proposed personnel. A list of equipment for the execution of the works. Now, Madam Chair, let's go back up to number 11, because what I just listed, Madam Chair, what I just listed is in the terms of reference are the documents that need one to have to be qualified. Madam Chair Lady, so that you won't be, so if you're missing one of these documents, you go in the disqualified pile, Madam Chair. So if you go back to page, to number 11, it says a bank statement indicating the financial capacity of the company. So Madam Chair, if, you are, if, you, if you're missing this document, then you cannot be qualified. You go in the disqualified pile. Now, Madam Chair, based on the documents that we receive today. Here, Madam Chair, I have Aviana Cleanup and Construction. Madam Chair, parcel two, 5.5 million. I have here, Madam Chair, 
When you look at it, you have the list of requirements. You have down on this side that says yes, and you have down on this side that says no. Madam Chair, when I go cross on this side, number 11, it says a bank statement indicating the financial capacity of the company. There's an X, meaning that document was not in the file, was not in the packet. So, Madam Chair, when I go over now and I look at the other documents, it says Aviana disqualified. Madam Chair, when I look at Aviana, parcel 5, 4.6 million. It says here, number 10, proof of owner of the sole proprietor is not bankrupt and that it is not experiencing liquidity or cash flow problems as issued on St. Martin. Madam Chair, I seen an X, which means disqualified, an X. I'm seeing it here. It means you did not have the requisite or the prerequisite documents needed to complete your pile, to complete your file. Just like what it says in the terms of reference. In the terms of reference, Madam Chair, that the Council of Ministers signed off on, that says you must have all these documents to be qualified. When I look at Aviana, Madam Chair, they don't have all the documents, so they are disqualified. It's not me saying it. One moment. Madam Chair, if I look at the documents that we have here, I am seeing always in place, there's a line. Madam Chair, there's a line which means they are qualified. So you don't have DQ. DQ meaning disqualified. But Madam Chair, if I go down on this paper and I look at number two, if I look at number two, Aviana, clean up and construction company, I am seeing DQ. I am seeing DQ, meaning, not Dutch Quarter, you know, meaning disqualified. And there's a put off. There's a put off, Madam Chair. There's a put off in the corner of the page. Again, when I look at Aviana for the other parcel, for the 5.3 million, I am seeing DQ, meaning disqualified. And there's a put off, Madam Chair. There's a put off. Madam Chair, like I read earlier, when I look at Aviana, that is missing the document to make it qualified, I am seeing one, two, three, four, five, six signatures with dates. But the document is here. You're squinching your eyes. You supposed to have re received it too as well, Madam Chair, in your packet. So there's no need to squint your eye. The document is here. The document is here. Madam Chair Lady, with all their signatures, all, every one of them. So then the question is, how it is today that Aviana has become qualified, Madam Chair? And if that is the case, because according to the Ombudsman, the bank statement meticula, um, um, miraculously appeared after. So the question is this. When did that document receive? When did that document came in? Did it, did it come into the file? Did it come in to the, to the boxes? After the signatures was already signed off, Madam Chair, after it was locked away, after it was put away. Because according to the Ombudsman, According to the minister, a box was upstairs, something was there, and then when you ask the minister, oh, so this didn't happen. But Madam Chair, look the documents here. Here are the documents. So the question is, how did Aviana know that it was missing a document? How did they know? Because Madam Chair, a staff member, a staff member of the minister of the cabinet came with a document and said, look at here. Here's a document. But Madam Chair, we have signatures saying disqualified. So it doesn't matter what document you bring after. It can't get in. 
because it was already sealed, signed, that you are disqualified. But the question is, Madam Chair, how did Aviana know that it was missing a document for later on for that document to appear? How did they know? Because if they were told, Madam Chair, if they were told that they are missing this document, then my question to the Honorable Minister in the Cabinet, Madam Chair, when I look at Leonard Enterprise, they also, they also was missing a document, a plan of section, a plan of action work plan for the execution of the works. Were they also notified to bring in that plan? Because Leonard Enterprise have been doing it for years. For years, Madam Chair, for years. They have been picking up garbage. It's not like what the minister said, oh yeah, everyone gets upset because of change. This is not change, Madam Chair. This is fraud. That's what this is. And since the minister of finance and all of them like to attack others and talk about bid rigging, this is what you call bid rigging, Madam Chair. And I hope, I hope, Madam Chair, he got a Guyanese writer listening right now to write this report. Because that's what this is, Madam Chair Lady. This is bid rigging. This is fraud. Like the Ombudsman said, it wasn't transparent, nor it wasn't fair. Because if it was fair, Madam Chair, Tamara Leonard and all the rest of them, what happened? Sorry, Leonard Enterprise. Leonard Enterprise, Madam Chair, would have received, whether it was a call, whether it was whether they sent a dove, whether they send a e anything, whatever they send, whatever that smoke signal to indicate that they are missing a document, then they should have been given that privilege too. So the question is, Madam Chair, how, how did Aviana know they was missing a document? How did they know they was missing a document so that the document could have appeared after it was all signed off? How did they know, Madam Chair Lady? Because on all these documents, on all these documents, it show where they are disqualified. Now, Madam Chair, I can zoom in also on Garden Boys. I can also zoom in on them because they are also disqualified. Yes. Yes, they are also disqualified. But you see, Madam Chair, the question is the documents according to the terms of reference that the Council of Ministers signed off on. That's what it is, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, we have the numbers and the evaluation on how it was added up. And Madam Chair, it was done. It was done, Madam Chair. By pen. It was done by pen. Handwritten. So you know what this means? This is when they're in the discussions and they're writing it down. You can clearly see how it was manipulated, Madam Chair. You can see it. But it's for those who understand, Madam Chair Lady, how the, how the calculation work. How it works, Madam Chair. That's what it is. So... Madam Chair, again, again, when I look at, at quality sweepers, when I look at quality sweepers on these documents, they passed. Quality sweepers passed because they have a line. Just like always in, pay, in place, they have a line, but did not get the bid. And the ones that failed got the bid. The question is how? So what the ministry did, they allowed, so what they did after, they brought back in others that was disqualified because now their packet has been complete. Because now they receive the documents now. So they bring them back in to be evaluated again. Then the question is, evaluated by whom? Evaluated by whom? Because at that time, Madam Chair, based on these documents, the members of them had resigned and, and distanced themselves from the committee. Madam Chair, that's what you call fraud. That's what you call bid rigging. Because you set it up and make it that other individuals who have failed get the opportunity to come in who you specifically picked. 
That's the reason why, Madam Chair, the Ombudsman said it was not transparent, nor was it fair. Not my words, but it's the words of the High Council. I so want to thank the Member of Parliament who is not here, William Marlin, for being on the radio and saying we should call this meeting. We should have called this meeting from before. So I thank him very much. Because now here we have today, that meeting that he said, we should call. Regardless whether the Ombudsman is here or not. Madam Chair, we here as members of Parliament, we did not make the rules of order. Sorry, we did not make the, the terms of reference. But Madam Chair, the whole Council of Ministers is complicit in this. It is clear. Look, the documents are here. It is clear. It, it is signed off. It is put off. The SG signature is there. Everything is there, Madam Chair. I could call the SG name. I mean, the department head name. I can call his name, but his, sign his signature is here on the document. And it's on the document that says, all waste in place, pass. Blue tender construction, disqualified. Down and dirty general works, baby. Well, you, I would have disqualified. You would have named like that too. Disqualified. KMD cleaning, pass. Okay, Leonard Enterprise, disqualified. Madam Chair, Aviana, disqualified. Garden Boys, disqualified. But Madam Chair, they have contracts today. Now, Madam Chair, don't get me wrong. Huh? The issue for me is not the companies that have the contract. It's not a company that have the contract. The issue for me is how it was manipulated for them to have the contract. Now, the High Council of State said it is not fair, nor was it transparent. Madam Chair, we have asked for these documents. I would also like to ask through you, Madam Speaker, did the Ombudsman receive these documents? Did they receive these documents? Okay? So, Madam Chair, not only should the public of St. Martin receive these documents, but it should be walked to the prosecutor's office as well. It should be walked to the OM's office as well, Madam Chair Lady. Why? Because the Minister of Finance jump on the press briefing and talk about possible bid rigging to distract the people of St. Martin about the bridge. Bid rigging, possible bid rigging. But Madam Chair, look the bid rigging right here. Look at right here, Madam Chair Lady. And that's why I told the people of St. Martin, you just have to read page 16 to 19. But to get a comprehensive, a comprehensive understanding, start to read what's in the terms of reference. What's in the terms of reference? Madam Chair Lady. And it, it is clear. It is clear. Madam Chair, I just have six documents that I'm making reference from. But Madam Chair, it is one, it is two, it is three, it is four, it is five, it is six, it is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Madam Chair, on each and every one of them, Madam Chair, you can see who is qualified and who is disqualified on all of them. You can see the parcel that they bid on. Madam Chair, lady, you can see the cost of every parcel. And what is even more striking and important is the signatures, Madam Chair. And this is the reason why I said even the governor should be put on notice. Because then the question is, what type of due diligence did he do? What was done from his department? What was done from his cabinet? That's why I asked in the beginning, Madam Chair, and I hope Parliament is taking me seriously, requesting the government to ask for the advice and the documents that were sent to the governor so we can make this comparison. Because it doesn't matter how you flip the coin, it is no way that the governor would have received these documents and signed off on it. It is no way. So then the question again comes, Madam Chair, how, how did Aviana know they was missing a document? Because, Madam Chair, in the terms of reference, it is mentioned clearly. The committee 
is sent in a room. They are in a room. And they, com they, they meticulously go through the completeness of the documents. Madam Chair, not my words. It's in the terms of reference. It's in the terms of reference. And meticulously, they are in that room going through the completeness of the documents and have noticed that Aviana is not complete. Their packet is not complete. So what happened? Based on that information, they was placed on the disqualified section. The disqualified section. It was put off and it was signed off on. The question, Madam Chair, how did they know that their file was incomplete? And according to the Ombudsman, the bank statement miraculously appeared. It appeared after. It appeared after, Madam Chair. So it appeared after, Madam Chair, the completeness was done. It appeared after the completeness and the check of all the documents was done, which is sealed and put away and locked, Madam Chair. How did it get in? Couldn't have walked in by itself. How did that document get in? Madam Chair, that now, the, 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 that, that now the, 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 the ministry could have decided to bring in individuals who have been disqualified, bring them back into the fray. Now he has a full complete packet, a full complete file, and now you're qualified. How? How is that, Madam Chair? Madam Chair, the, in the response from the minister, he said, oh no, that never happened. That's what the minister said. It never happened. I see some of my colleagues frowning. Yes, apparently they weren't paying attention, but it was said. And it is documented what was said by the, by the minister. But Madam Chair, then if that didn't happen, then what did? Then what did, Madam Chair? So the question is, the question is, we go back, Madam Chair Lady, to Leonard Enterprise. And when you look at the document, Madam Chair Lady, from Leonard Enterprise, they too are all, they, they, they themselves have an X, one X, from the parcel that, that they bid on, one X, from the parcel that they bid on. No, don't, don't hold your head and rub like you're getting stressed. Mm -hmm. Tina, you have to pay attention, Madam Chair Lady. So look at your documents and you'll understand it too as well. If you look at the pile, no, I, I, I don't care who laugh and who ain't get on, okay? <laughs> Madam Chair, if you look, if you look at the pile, okay? Here we have, here we have Aviana Cleanup and Construction, Sole Proprietorship, Parcel 2, 5.5 million guilders. There's an X. There's an X. Because they are missing a document. They are missing a document. Madam Chair Lady, in the completeness, all the signatures are here. All the signatures are here in the completeness. All their signatures. Which means this, this document was placed in the disqualified file. Put in a box and locked away. Madam Chair Lady, Aviana, parcel five, 4.6 million guilders. They are sole proprietorship, they are disqualified. Here's the X. Why are they disqualified, Madam Chair? Number 10, proof of the owner of the sole proprietor is not bankrupt and that it is not experiencing liquidity or cash flow. That document didn't reach as yet. Here are all the signatures. All the signatures are there for crying out loud, Madam Chair. So this is placed in the disqualified pile and this is locked away. Madam Chair, lady, it is locked away. Now, I'm trying to find the one from Leonard. In Ah, oh, here it is. It, it, it miraculously appeared. This is the one from Leonard Enterprise, Madam Chair, lady. And they are disqualified. All the signatures and everything are here with the path of the department here. Look at right here. 
So this is also placed in the disqualified portion, Madam Chair, and this is locked away. But Madam Chair, others now, the box are locked away, and they are locked and put away. And all of a sudden, according to the Ombudsman, miraculously, the bank statement for Aviana appeared. But Madam Chair, these files are already locked away. They are already locked away based on the terms of reference, based on the terms of reference that the Council of Ministers sign off on. You know what is the good thing, Madam Chair? You have the Council of Ministers right now listening. You have the minister right now listening and sending his WhatsApp and text messages to the members of Parliament here on how it's supposed to go. But that's good. That is good, because they're going to have to answer to it, Madam Chair. Now, coming to the Ombudsman report when she said, it is not fair, nor transparent. Did Leonard Enterprise get a smoke signal, get a, 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 a dove sent to them, get an email, get a message, get a call, whatever it is, whatever was given to Aviana, did they receive the same courtesy too as well to bring in that one document that was missing? And if that is the case of no, Madam Chair, then this tender was rigged and it wasn't fair and it wasn't transparent and it should be retendered. I thank you very much, Madam Chair Lady. Thank you, MP Emmanuel. Next on the speaker's list, we have MP Ramu. MP Ramu. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Um, I was unable to attend the meeting, the first meeting that was called, so indeed, yes, I did miss quite a number of things. I was at the hospital at the time. Nevertheless, um, I would like to ask a question since we're having a, a conversation, a discussion amongst my colleagues. I would like to ask my colleagues, um, my colleagues concerning the document that we just received because uh, indeed, in, in the Ombudsman report, there are quite a number of statements being made about things appearing out of the blue. And this document that we just received, obviously, is one of them that just appeared out of the blue because it was also missing um, according to the report, which I find very strange if uh, um, such an, uh, I don't want to use the word damning, but such a report is being conducted and all of this information should be there where did this document miraculously come from? You know, um, because this, 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 is, this is some vital information, I believe, that is being shared with us here today. So I don't know if my colleagues are able to disclose that, but um, it is, uh, for me, interesting to know where these documents were prior to um, or during the investigation and where they came from, um, because it is something that is very important for uh, the investigation moving forward. Um, nevertheless, I believe that uh, I, um, the minister is expected to be here on Wednesday, and that would be one of the questions definitely that would be asked, you know, where did these documents, or where were these documents um, before handing? Because I, I have my take on it, but I'm just wondering first if, um, if, if my colleagues are, are willing or able to share that information, and if not, then um, I also would like to say something pertaining to this further. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Ramu. Next, we have MP Duncan. No, MP, no? Or next? Okay, MP Gums or MP Peterson? Yes. Would you like to respond? MP Gums, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, I thank MP Ramu for her question. Um, we received the documents anonymously. I do not know from whom they came from. Um, it was in an envelope, and I also want to just direct um, or state for the public, because they have not seen the letter that was sent and submitted with the documents, but we've also asked that it be sent to the Ombudsman, because um, as MP Ramu correctly mentioned, she, the Ombudsman's office did state that the evaluation checklist, ah, uh, it was a footnote on page 17 um, that because the ministry refused to provide the individual evaluation sheets for the completeness of tender documents signed by the committee members, the Ombudsman was unable to verify the statements made by committee members during the investigation. 
Um, so indeed, that is a question I think that the ministry can answer. But as for how the documents came to us, it was anonymously dropped off. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Gums. MP Ramu, <coughs> would you like to respond? <coughs> MP Ramu, you Thank you, call. MP Gums. Um, my, my, what I really wanted to say now as it pertains to that is, you know, we, we talk a lot about integrity in here, and I am one person that totally believes in integrity. And um, this, again, is important information, information that should have, I believe, come from the department. But why I talk about integrity is, I think as parliament, when we talk about integrity, we should be leading by example. Now, I understand that is also our job to definitely hold the ministers accountable and to um, be the representative of the people. But I don't believe in us either um, encouraging um, behavior of, I don't, know, I don't know if I want to call it a leaked document because it, it seems to be that, because my question then becomes about the, the, the validity of it. And I heard one of my colleagues talking about it being an official document. Yes, there are signatures, but for me, sitting here as a parliamentarian, I then question what is really going on in, 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 in our government in terms of documents being hidden, or a, were they hidden? They just came about, you know? So, so th that is my question in terms of the integrity of the persons that are working within these departments and divisions, because it is quite strange that the ombudsman could not get her hands on this, and then these documents just um, appeared. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Thank you, MP Ramu. I see that MP Gums would like to respond to MP Ramu's um, Just as a, as, a, as a comment, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, in corporate life, you have whistleblower policies. Um, we don't have one, despite having been requested to draft one by several integrity reports. Um, and I also think that the precedence has been set to kind of demonize those who witness something going wrong and find any way to get the information out there. History is um, spotted with instances where whistleblowers have called attention to um, crimes, actually, and incidents that have damaged people, that have damaged countries, companies, etc. cetera. Um, so I think, you know, uh, in, in terms of the integrity of the people in government, I think the integrity of um, people who call attention to wrongdoings being done in a government by getting the information to people who have the power to make decisions on what is occurring in government, I think that their integrity is intact. I just want to make that statement publicly um, because the culture of fear of retribution and repercussions for stating, I don't believe this is wrong, or suddenly being labeled persona non grata because something doesn't jive with your values um, and principles, I think that it's, we need to send that message as parliament um, that that is not something that needs to continue, that culture that we've developed over the last, I would dare say, five decades in St. Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Gums. Next, we have MP Duncan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to my colleagues here in Parliament. Of course, a good afternoon to the people of St. Martin tuned in. Uh, Madam Chair, I just have a couple of statements. Because over the last year, I would say that I... I <laughs> There's been a lot that has uh, taken place, and for me, not only as a representative of the people and, and an MP, but uh, a civil servant, as a citizen, the state of our democracy is important. Is it being eroded right now? Some will say yes, some will say no. We have to raise the standards, not only here in parliament, but, but in government as well, with the people at the core of that, okay? That's, that's number one. And when we talk about standards, what are we doing? They are called principles of good governance. Okay, so the decisions being made by elected officials, by ministers, have to be put next to these principles, these principles that are used everywhere in every country. Ethical decision making, is the decision right? Let's talk about transparency, because we have a problem with transparency in this country. Everything is a secret, why? What are we hiding? Whether the document is leaked or not, it is a part of a public process. Government provides services and goods to the public. They should be transparent and open and everyone should see it, it should not be a secret. 
we are setting a res an example. We're supposed to set an example for the future generations of this country. They're supposed to understand that there is accountability for wrongdoing. Now, wrongdoing now is, uh, is left up to, up to perspective, right? Because some of us see things as wrong, some of us see things as uh, there's a gray area, so I guess that can be uh, debated. But we all have to remember that we're setting an example for the future generations of this country, especially as it pertains to proper leadership and governance. 12 years since 10, 10, 10, Madam Chair Lady, 12 years. I would love, and honestly, I'm thinking about how we can do it, a survey too, not only the people of St. Martin, but to the civil servants who have worked over 12 years in government. Has the quality of the service being provided to the people increased or decreased? Has it improved or diminished? Is our democracy being eroded? And I am not pointing any fingers. We all have a responsibility in it. But I would love to know, especially from the civil service, are we going down? Are we going down a dark path in terms of how we do things, the types of decisions that we make, or is it improving? Because we always hear we're a young country, we're learning, we're growing. We had new ministries appear at 10, 10, 10. But how is the service to the public being evaluated right now? It's being monitored, and that's what we should be doing. Monitoring, holding government accountable as per our job. Madam Chair, I just wanted to make one last statement about the High Council of State. The Ombudsman is not just any regular organization. The Office of the Ombudsman is a High Council of State, helping us in our work. Just like the, the, the General Audit Chamber does reports all the time. Do we ever call them in to present their reports? The reports that are supposed to help us with our job? If we don't raise a bar now, Madam Chair, I think we should just, I don't know, call it a day. Because I think we're playing with our democracy and the fact that there are young people looking at us right now and looking at how we act and how we behave. And I think that's what we need to talk about. I am looking forward to the meeting on Wednesday to hear the minister's response from the first round. But I am also looking forward to hearing the minister's response to these documents that, um, that to me paint a very vivid picture. And, um, and then we will have to continue to do what we are doing here. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Thank you, MP Duncan. Next on the speaker's list, we have MP Christophe Emmanuel. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to tell you a story. When I was attending the Methodist Agogic Center, the Mac School, the, at, at that time they had no high school, and that was the campus up in Betty's Estate. Miss Fleming was the principal at that time, and they came up with a genius plan where they came up with all these stamps. And they told the children and them, go and sell these stamps, and you're going to have shares into the playground. So the person, so you, yeah, yeah, you know, they, 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 they tricked us at that time. But we were young children, so we was happy to go out and sell all these stamps. So we sold all these stamps, Madam Chair, and we brought in the money to the school, and the school gave us a beautiful playground. So I felt good because when I look at the, fair, the, the, the swing, I said, well, I have shares in the swing. But there was a particular, 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 Madam Chair, um, equipment that they had that used to just spin around like this. Is a reason why it's called spin. So when you hear members of parliament start to come and ask, but, but how did this document reach? And, and again, putting the emphasis, Madam Chair, on how the document reached and not on why didn't the minister submit those documents. The question is not how did we get the document. The question is not how did the document reach. The question is, why didn't the ministry or the minister submitted these documents when it was asked for based on the Ombudsman report? So, Madam Chair, we would go on this Ferris wheel thing, and someone and, and, and children would spin and spin and spin. And, Madam Chair, when we come off of it, we are all dizzy. And we're all walking and we're woozy and we're moving like that because the spin, Madam Chair, distract us from all of us going around in circle, going around in circle. That's why it's called spin because they come with their spin not to address the real emphasis. Oh, 
How did the document get in? How did we receive the document? How did, how did, how, how the document, no, why didn't this document been submitted? And asked for when it was asked for. Start there. Start there. So the question should be to the minister and the ministry. But minister, through you, Madam Chair, why didn't you submit these documents to the ombudsman? When she said the completeness check form was not complete based and we couldn't verify. We couldn't verify what the committee members were saying because we did not receive all the documents. Madam Chair, again, again, based on these documents and all the signatures, which Sermon Judge on put off on it. I don't want to call the civil servant because it's not the civil servant, Madam Chair. Aviana was disqualified from parcel five. Disqualified, Madam Chair Lady. Disqualified, Madam Chair. But when you look at it today, when you look at it today, Garden Boys awarded parcel two, Aviana awarded parcel five, Netherlands awarded parcel one, four, and seven. How? Was it possible, when I look at this document here, Madam Chair, look at it here, and for my colleague who haven't been here and haven't seen, I can probably put it on this side for you to see it, but look at it here, Madam Chair, look at it here. Parcel 5, 4.603 million 171, look at it here. Aviana, missing the X, here's the X, Madam Chair, saying, Proof that owner of the sole proprietor is not bankrupt. They were missing that document. But they are awarded parcel five today. They are awarded parcel five today. How? How, Madam Chair? How? I want to read this, Madam Chair. There's clearly an issue slash confusion about whom all went into the locked room and took documents to copy and how disqualified contractors became qualified. What do you make of such as the government isn't clear? The minister states that based on a memo from the then acting department head and his cabinet staff, it never happened. With regards to the minister in all honesty, he said he wasn't there and didn't see anything. Please note, that since this whole tender saga, the acting department dropped the position as he was pushed in a corner with signing off documents which led, in my opinion, to his employees distancing themselves from the tender procedure due to unethical behavior of certain cabinet members. So who and what must we believe exactly, Madam Chair Lady? What is it we must believe? What? Madam Chair, the document states that they were disqualified. That they were disqualified. So it's not how we got the documents. It's like what my colleague, Ms. Duncan, made a while ago. The Ombudsman is a high council of state, requested certain documents, and they never came. But guess what, Madam Chair Lady? Guess what? You see this National Alliance? Madam Chair Lady, it would have never happened. It would have never happened if Ms. Adoin was still the Ombudsman. It would have never happened, Madam Chair Lady. So now, what it is, what it is now, to discredit the present Ombudsman. To discredit the present Ombudsman. But it's not an individual, Madam Chair. It's the institution that we are looking at. Is the institution. And Madam Chair, you know what is so rewarding with this? The chair leader quiet. Okay? Because they got to formulate in their mind how they're going to, how they're going to defend it. That's what they have to do, Madam Chair Lady. That's what they have to do. So it's to discredit the ombudsman, the individual. Discredit that person because they have a personal agenda. They have a personal agenda. No, Madam Chair, it's the institution requested the documents and they didn't come. The question is, why? 
Madam Chair Lady. I thank you very much. Thank you, MP Emanuel. Next on the speakers list, we have MP Sarah Westcott Williams. You have the floor. Madam Chair Lady, um, thank you once again. Madam Chair Lady, at the beginning of this meeting, the question was where, where do we go with this meeting, whether it should be held, should have been held with or without the Ombudsman present. Madam Chair Lady, I want to, I want to emphasize a point that I raised um, earlier in the meeting because I want to see this reflected in the, in the report of this meeting. The government, Madam Chair Lady, needs to be made aware that I hope I can say the Parliament of St. Martin will not accept the fact that we don't have a general resolution, a general decree governing um, procurement, et cetera, et cetera. It needs to be stated, Madam Chair Lady. Madam Chair Lady, in the beginning of the meeting, I also referred to the fact that it seems the, the, the government has come to basically feel that parliament accepts the fact that we don't have an amended budget, that the government, in contravention of the very same National Accountability Ordinance, Madam Chair Lady, need, needs to submit anything that they do outside of the budget mandated by the parliament. Madam Chair Lady, we're in the middle of August. We have the, 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 government has, the government has made it very clear with total disregard for parliament that, for example, they have, they have paid out vacation allowance, sent in a law to be amended to undo their decision not to pay it out, and with total disregard for the, for the fact that there is a parliament here. And Madam Chair Lady, it needs to be said the government right now is acting in contravention of more than one law. And it needs to be stated. As I said before, Madam Chair Lady, the expectation was that a lot of these matters would have come to parliament because for at least six weeks, we were out of their hair, out of the government's hair, in terms of calling them to meet and asking them questions, and so many issues outstanding. Yet every Wednesday, depending on what topic the government feels is important for them, and then even, they, and then, even then, when members of the media query certain matters, it's a put off and, uh, you know, and they're, they're coming back and who don't know, Madam Chair Lady, we can't continue to operate like this. No wonder the Parliament of St. Martin is getting the rap it is getting. Because we sit back, we don't want to accept that this is a dualistic system. Whether you're opposition, coalition, this is where the government needs to give account. This is where the government needs to give account. They are just want that, and especially the part with the budget, because, you know, it's, it's ironic. Again, I need to say, Madam Chair, Lady, I remember several months ago, the Minister of Finance making a statement with respect to whatever at the time they say they encountered or found or were investigating regarding um, their predecessor or predecessors and the minister indicated that, yeah, you know, he's, he's going to the full length of the law where this, where this according to him, um, mismanagement, if you wish, was, was concerned. But Madam Chair Lady, um, obviously being in contravention of a law that governs the public expenditures, exactly, et cetera, of government, and the government feel that that is, that is okay. That is okay. The government came in and, and we're going to do all of these beautiful things. Yes, the pandemic hit. Yes, we understand that, Madam Chair Lady. Yes, we have given that opportunity to say, well, you know, um, yeah, you could, you could not have foreseen this. You bigger countries than, 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 than we are deal, have to deal with it. But at some point, Madam Chair Lady, that, that, that argument no longer holds where accountability to parliament is concerned. So Madam Chair Lady, I, I do hope that, um, that as, especially the issue of the, the budget 
and government coming to, 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 to Parliament. And I doubt we're going to see government coming to any um, public meetings in the near future. But at least, Madam Chair, Lady, it wouldn't be left not said that um, the government is currently operating outside of the of, outside of the law and the laws that govern this country. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams. Next, we have MP Rayon Peterson. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, MP Manuel, he, he touched base on something that's um, that's very troublesome in some modern society, especially coming from one faction in this parliament, and that's deflection. Um, if we would have read the report that we now have had for the last two months, on page four, the beginning of the report, you know, questions were asked as to where these documents came from and whether or not the minister had provided them or if he held them back. Page four of the same Ombudsman report, that's online for everybody to read, by the way. The information gathering process was frustrated by the refusal of the minister in contravention of Article 19 of the National Ordinance Ombudsman to provide critical information to the investigation. Based on the hearings with the evaluation committee, it became evident that the individual evaluation sheets for the completeness of tender documents, as well as signed copies of the internal findings report, were not included in the documentation provided by the ministry. Other follow-up information and or documentation, based on the knowledge attained from the hearings, was requested as well. The minister refused to provide the pertinent information, citing that the ministry had concluded, quote unquote, the information already provided to the office of the ombudsman was thorough and complete, and that the question and request goes outside the scope of the investigation. So in this final report, we have the minister's opinion on the request from the ombudsman to get these same documents that were supposedly leaked. So it's surprising to me to hear it coming from this same faction. Where did these documents come from? You should ask your minister. These games that we continue to play with the people of St. Martin need to stop. The contents of what is leaked is what you have to look at because the truth is hard to accept sometimes. But that is it. That is it. The deflection tactics have to stop. It's called fear mongering, emotional hijacking, and it's childish. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Peterson. Next, we have MP Ramu. You have the floor, and then. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Madam Chair Lady, I think in my statements, I was quite clear in the questions that I asked. And um, to my board colleagues who are talking about deflecting and what is childish, I think what is childish is the fact that we speak out of one corner of our mouth sometimes, what we pretend to be ethical, and other times, it's just the opposite. For me, I think what I said was very clear, so I'm going to state it one more time for clarity's sake. I asked, indeed, where did these documents come from? Because um, if we're talking about documents being official, then they should have been provided. And I agree with my colleagues that it should have been provided by the minister. Yes. So that's why I asked the question, then where did they come from? because obviously they were not provided to the ombudsman. And it's not about deflecting, it's about getting answers. And that's why I also said at the end of my statement that the, the question that I'm asking here will also be asked on Wednesday when the minister comes to parliament to answer. Because for me, the answers need to be given. And it's not about deflection because all of us are here to represent the people of St. Martin and not one particular group or the other, but every single citizen of St. Martin. And that is what I'm here to do. Whether I'm a part of a party or not, my core job here is to represent the people of St. Martin. And questions are asked so that you can get answers and facts. And that is what I am here for, the facts. Not about whether it's a party asking or defend, no. I am here to defend every single person living in St. Martin. And therefore, that's why I ask the question. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Thank you, MP Ramu. Next, we have MP Pantaflet. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I have to respond to <clears throat> a statement made by uh, one of my colleagues on this for regards to the issue of the National Alliance uh, Party, inferring that the National Alliance Party is against the Ombudsman. So, Madam Chair, I had to look at the Constitution of St. Martin, and I came of Article 78.3, which says the Ombudsman 
is elected or selected by the members of parliament. So based on that, Madam Chair, because it was said that had it been the former ombudsman, then this behavior of national lives would not be what it is now. So I want, Madam Chair, if the parliament can be provided with the date of the meeting where this ombudsman that is there now was appointed or approved as to who voted for and who voted against this ombudsman. Because it is said the National Alliance is against the present ombudsman right now. Had it been the former ombudsman, then we, our behavior would not be as it is right now. So Madam Chair, for clarity sake, it was said publicly. It was said publicly. So I want to see exactly how did the National Alliance voted when this process presented as ombudsman. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, MP Pantaflet. Is there any other member of parliament that wishes to have the floor before we close off this agenda? MP Bryson. MP Bryson, can we just take a five minute adjournment before you begin? Uh, I would Please. like that bathroom break. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Meeting adjourned for five minutes.
Welcome back, members of parliament. We needed a brief, brief adjournment for some of the members of parliament to take a bathroom break. <laughs> We'd like to now continue with MP Rolando Bryson. You have the floor. Not again. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon once again to me, to you and to colleagues and those viewing. Madam Chair, I'm so, I feel almost honored and proud that a member of parliament is just anxiously waiting to hear from me, you know. Um, I guess maybe we were supposed to be going Palatino together, so that ain't happening again, so he's a little, a little sad about that, but that's fine. I'm right here. Um, Madam Chair, I just uh, coming back to the topic at hand, uh, like I said, um, I guess what I gathered from you is some of the questions raised here will be uh, kind of sent as additional information to the Ombudsman if any questions were posed to also get uh, from her. But I feel like what we have here, which is interesting, it's like uh, we created a third round for the OVA coming on Thursday. Madam Chair, I already posed 18 questions to the Minister of Romy uh, in the public meeting. As a matter of fact, if I'm correct, the only three members in that meeting that posed questions to the Minister of Romy, uh, I'm not sure if MP Westcott had questions. She had some statements, but maybe she did also pose some questions. But it was myself, MP Bromble, and MP Emmanuel definitely asked questions because we wanted information. I would guess if you ask questions, it's because you have some concerns. You want to understand what's going on. Madam Chair, the first question I posed to the minister is what does he believe went wrong in this process in hindsight? And if he was to go back and really reevaluate, or if he could go back in time, so to speak, to paraphrase my question, what would he do differently? And my, the question number eight that I posed is with regards to any documents that were missing, appearing, or disappearing, what explanation can he give for that, not only for this tender, but for also the previous tender, so that we can understand what is the difference between what was done before and what was done after. Is this a consistent manner of doing it, or what has changed? Madam Chair, I say that to say, this is exactly, we, you know, MP Duncan spoke about democracy, fairness, and so on. If you want a fair story, this is exactly what the members of parliament are supposed to do. You're supposed to question. You get the information from the ombudsman, and then you question the minister. Other than the members who pose questions, Madam Chair, the faction that chooses to just say, me ain't got no questions to ask because I've already made up my mind, that's maybe their method of working. I, Madam Chair, what I look forward to is the answer to the question, all of this explanation I was given here, Madam Chair, I already asked that question. I want to know as well. I need an explanation on the evaluation process. That was one of my questions. I asked about the missing bank statement. How is it possible? Where, is the, where did this box come from? Who has access to where this location? Is it just the department head? Is it the minister? Madam Chair, the records will show I posed those questions. Because that is how parliament is supposed to work. Madam Chair, if you look at what I, how I can explain the role of, of the Ombudsman Parliament and a minister. You can see, for example, that we would be a judge in a court case and you have a plaintiff and a defendant. Madam Chair, the defense is constantly looking for more and more opportunities to present their case. To me, we've heard it. We get it. Sorry, not the defense. The plaintiffs are asserting that something has gone completely wrong. The defendant is saying, Listen, I don't agree. On Wednesday, that defendant is coming to Parliament to tell us. You know who's ultimately the judge? It's us. His faith is in our hands. If a motion of no confidence is coming, he can't run from it. We can't run from it either. I certainly am not, because again, I participated in the meeting. I posed 18 questions to the minister. And it's interesting to see that after the fact, when I said, guys, I even had no time to prepare for this meeting, it would have been good to get some more information. I posed the question about missing documents, and now it's as if this comes as a surprise. Madam Chair, this is no surprise to me. The report is very clear that there's a discrepancy between what the committee is saying and what the minister is saying. And there's only one person that can give us that answer, the minister. There's only one other entity that can give us clarity, the ombudsman. The ombudsman is not here. 
So it was nice to get a little venting session from those that, that feel like we just need to show our case. I think your case is clear. We've heard it on radio. We've heard it on the floor of parliament. You know, more documents are coming in and more is going to come. Madam Chair has stated very clearly, this is not over. This is going to continue, it, whether it's recording ministers and all kind of thing, it's not going to stop. Me, I'm focused on my job. I would like the answers to my questions from the minister. He needs to come here with a very good explanation, else he will have a problem, I think. But let's see what happens on Wednesday. So we're going to have a CC today. We, we've posed these questions that I already posed. So why Rolando Bryce didn't talk first? Because I already talked before all of you. I've already posed my questions. When it comes to the, the second agenda point, Vromi, that has customarily been with the Ombudsman. Again, I don't have any questions for that right now until the Ombudsman is here. Oh, sorry, the annual report with the, the third agenda point, sorry. So, um, Madam Chair, I would like to specifically, if you will indulge the, the, the central committee, so to speak, to propose uh, two other questions to be sent to the Ombudsman which would be one, if the Ombudsman can explain a bit of a timeline about these documents being requested. And uh, as one of the MPs read, there's kind of an elucidation given as to the minister not cooperating. Can we get more details? Maybe the actual letter that the minister sent saying, I'm not sharing those documents. Is there any other further elucidation there as to why? Or did he just give no reason and say, by me sending you the documents? That would be one thing I think we can request from the Ombudsman. Um, let's say the full letter so that we get the full context of why that was not given. And then also in the section of the report talking about the, the missing bank statement, if you give me a moment to just get to that part, missing. Yeah, that's on page 17. The second paragraph speaks of apparently Aviana's bank statements, and then quote says, appeared out of the blue. Um, maybe what would help, it, and it kind of really, it, it, it looks like there's no straight answer as to how these statements, uh, or, or how these statements appeared or reappeared. Can the Ombudsman maybe give more detail as to the cabinet members' explanation and the committee members' explanations that are referred to in the report? Maybe there's, for example, minutes of a discussion with them to really get the explanation as to what really went on there, even before the, the, the minister comes, because, hey, it's his word. You have others saying something else. Maybe that would be also helpful for us to better understand what really went on with how not only something might have appeared out of the blue, but the other side of it is how maybe something disappeared out of the blue. So, Madam Chair, I think maybe that can give us some extra information. But other than that, the answers I need are from the minister. I look forward to the meeting on Wednesday to get those answers, and then we go from there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Bryson. Is there any other member of parliament that wish to continue deliberating on agenda point two? I see that we have then come to the end of the deliberation of agenda point two, and then we will now... Um, I'd like to thank you for your input on that, and then, then we go over to agenda point three. So agenda point two is closed, and we now go over to agenda point three. And uh, agenda point three starts with, on August 8, 2022, Parliament received the Ombudsman Year Report 2021. This document, as mentioned before, is registered on, under incoming document IS-1167, dated August 8, 2022, and can be found on the P drive. At this time, I would like to give um, the members of parliament an opportunity to give feedback on this year's report. Now, the reason, one of the reasons I felt it prudent, I've read it important to also add this on, seeing the fact that the ombudsman is not here, most of the information in the report is against, given more, um, is against, again, two, there's two systemic investigations on the um, Vrami Ministry. Um, I think we can um, have a discussion about it. I felt to give more context of what is happening um, right now with the, um, the report, the first report, the systemic investigation. And maybe we have a dialogue. If there's some questions we can, um, or some comments we want to make, or some statements we want to make, or some or if at the, end, at the end of this meeting we feel that we need an ombudsman in for this, then, then fine. But I just felt 
it's necessary to add a report. If that's not the case, if we don't need to, if you don't feel the need to discuss the report further, then we can adjourn, adjourn this agenda point and leave it for the when the ombudsman um, returns next month. Any member of parliament uh, that wish to have the floor on this? Yes? MP Gums. Thank you, you Madam Chair. I would um, say that for the annual report, perhaps then we can um, wait for the ombudsman to be okay. present. Not a problem. And then maybe by then the other systemic investigation will have concluded. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, or she can give some information as to when that would be concluded. Okay. Noted. <coughs> MP. Thank you. Any other MP that wish to have the floor on this agenda point? MP Bryson? Just, Madam Chair, for clarity, we're coming back to the previous agenda point. The questions that were posed will be will sent be to the sent Ombudsman. Thank more, you. Yes, for sure to the Ombudsman. Yes. Madam Chair, if possible, uh, being that those two, it's just two questions, mm -hmm. maybe, and I, I don't know if this, oh, no, the Secretary General is also away. I don't know if the Office of the Ombudsman can at least That's have that information. That's the problem we have. Because the Secretary General is away longer than the Ombudsman, uh, that is why we have to wait until mid-September. I'm no, I'm talking regarding to my question. If the office of the ombudsman is able to, let maybe let's try and see if we can get it. I will try my best to see, okay. and I'll, I'll keep everyone informed with the uh, with the feedback. Yes. Any other member of parliament? If that's the case, then we won't deliberate this uh, agenda point. It's not a it's not an issue. I will then close this agenda point and leave it until the ombudsman is back, and then we have a, a full fledged discussion. Then, then this um, agenda point is closed. <laughs> And oh, this agenda point is adjourned. <laughs> I'll call a new meeting, not a problem. With that, members of parliament, thank you for your in-depth uh, discussion and deliberation on the, all three agenda points. And this meeting is then. I will then close this meeting, and then we will have a discussion further with the ombudsman sometime next month. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>